Hello everybody, my name is Franklin Donnie D from Donnie D's Words of Wisdom and Donnie D's Soul Sundays here at the How To Show. My guest tonight is the, this brother is just, I'm going to have to let him talk for himself, but ladies and gentlemen, welcome Clifton Smith to the show. How you doing Clifton? Thank you. How you doing brother? I'm doing all right. Uh, you know, I met Clifton through Facebook actually, and we were both working on projects, and um, he had a song called... B movie slide return. B movie slide return. Go to YouTube and check it out. But it's a very hip song, and, and when you look at the video, you stop and say, "Hmm." Tell us a little bit about that uh, B movie slide return. Yeah, um, actually, it's a tribute to uh, Gil Scott Heron's track called B movie. Okay. So we we created B movie slide return. It was a song that uh, basically got me through college. It was one of those songs that you used to put on every morning before you go to class. Okay. And it kind of stuck with me, man. And um, I got a chance to uh, get together with some great musicians. All right. And uh, we kind of went over what Gil said, and uh, we figured out that the song that he had created 30 years ago, we were still going through the same stuff today. So uh, it was one of those endless, timeless pieces, and uh, we recreated it with uh, B-Movie Slight Return. The names have been changed to protect the guilty. People are always trying to return to the good old days. You know, like the way we were. Yeah. They were made in black and white, and so was everything else. You know, and uh, as I, I, I visited your home one day, and out walks out of the back room this real tall guy with a trumpet. I believe his name was Rom Lee. They played with Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yes, sir. He was one of the original uh, horn players. Right. Uh, the Phoenix Horns. Phoenix Horns, and he yeah. did a fantastic job on your cut. Yeah, we, we, uh, we're pretty close. Uh, Rom and I, we've been business partners, and we've done several projects together. So we're going to dedicate the next couple of years of, and fine-tune our uh, projects and get them completed, man, over the next couple of years. And uh, he's a hell of a musician, man. He's oh, yeah. About 60 years' worth of music experience, man. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Been in several plays. You're working on some uh, material as we speak. Tell us a little bit about your theatrics, your, your stage and all of that <laughs> stuff there, guy. Well, I, I took on the notion, man, that I could create a play. Uh-huh. Um, this was about eight years ago. So I took this adventure. I started writing a play about Marcus Garvey. Started doing my research. Um, and it took me to a whole nother level because a writing for a live actor uh, is a lot different than just writing a story. Okay. Because there's a rhythm that they speak and there's a formula to make the stuff hot on stage. So basically what I had to do, man, I had to go and learn how to act so I could write for actors. Okay. And I was fortunate enough to get with the group that put me on the fast track. Okay. And the next thing I know, I'm a lead in a play called Kindred, written by Daniel Kelleher. And uh, out of East LA College, the theater group, and the next thing we know, the play is hot. Uh, we go to the American College Festival, and we win the regionals. Yeah. And we actually, uh, we were one performance away from play, performing at the Lincoln Center. Well, did you win some type of an award for that? Yeah, I, I basically, I made the all-star team for college actors in 2015. All right. I got national Let's recognition. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I was proud to see your brother do it Thank that, you, brother. that well in that. So, what is in the future for um, Clifton Smith? I want to I combine my writing with music and with a message um, to be able to bring the... Uh, the message to the young people. Um, and I consider my writing and music almost one and the same, almost okay. with cooking, man. Okay. I consider those three things in my life almost one thing because I'm actually going after one goal. I want to create something that somebody's going to enjoy or learn from. Okay. And I, that's where I want to take my, my writing and my music. Okay, before we get into this clip uh, that uh, we have here, 
If anybody wants to know anything more about Clifton Smith, his work, how can they uh, catch up with you? Well, my email address is npatf at att.net. Uh, I am on Facebook under Clifton Smith. And just give me a holler and I'll reach out to anybody. And I'm basically trying to, anything great takes a collaboration. So I'm right. always trying to reach out and make connections with other artists, other writers, or anybody with any kind of direction or any kind of project that has some meaning. Yeah. I'll work with them. That's how we hooked up. That's right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've been sitting here talking with the man himself, Clifton Smith. Let's check out a clip. Talking about, Joe, you got the basics down. Look at your snap. I've seen how them classes run. They don't give a f I learned. They just want to sit there and show how smart they are, so I feel dumb. Now, you know that's Joe. Those people have volunteered. No one's forcing them to do it. They're doing it because they want to teach folks like you. See, that's what I'm talking about. Folks like you. What the f is that supposed to mean? Come into a place where I live trying to teach me something. Like they better. Like they first class. I'm trying to give back by showing some old nigga how to read. I don't want to be signing out words in front of people out. As we like to say here, it's been fun. We got to run. And uh, I just would like to thank you one more time, Clifton. And uh, when you finish some of these projects, you know how to catch up with me. That's right. I like, will you come back? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure? For sure, for sure. For sure, for sure. For sure, for sure. Really, really? Really, really? All right. <laughs> thank you, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Clifton Smith. That's my brother. The How To Show will be right back after this break. Hey, look, it's those guys. Uh, Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. Hi, may I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Okay. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome, oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. I got this. <coughs> Is that brand? <laughs> Colleges love extracurricular activities. Uh, chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to getschool.com for more info. I'm only 17, but I know about investing. Believe in something, buy shares in it. Watch it grow. So what if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. I could be one of the first college graduates from my family. The first philanthropist from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there's a second and a third. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney and I'm your dividend.
everyone. My name is Marcia Duran. I'm from Donnie D's Words of Wisdom show and today on the How To Show, my guest is Jay Tracy. Hi Jay. Hi Marcia. Um, you know Jay, uh, I would like you to, to tell everybody a little bit about yourself and uh, then we'll talk about how we got to know each other. Well, I am a wife, mother, Christian woman, I also am in the entertainment business, so I started off doing a lot of singing, acting, modeling, and then I started popping out babies. So <laughs> entertainment business kind of took a back burner, but I didn't let it go all the way. So I was a stay-home mother with my kids, and I also had still a lot of fire and passion, creativity, and mm -hmm. just a need to express myself to the world. So. I started a YouTube channel mm -hmm. so that I could work from home and entertain from home okay. and that really developed into also inspiring people from home. Uh, so I like to call the stuff I do inspiration with a laugh. So okay. I was on YouTube for a while and now I also blog on Facebook. Okay, and um, I think Facebook is where I might have seen some of your, your YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, it was very interesting because I I think I messaged you on uh, Facebook and asked you to be a guest on my radio show. Yes. And, um, and what was so interesting <laughs> about that is a couple of days later I saw you at the school that I work mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. um, because your children go to school there. Yes. And uh, it, was, it was quite, quite, uh, <laughs> it was like it was meant to be. Yes. You know, it was, yes. it, it was a, uh, a friendship meant to be. Yes. And uh, I was very, very happy to meet you. And um, I know everybody's uh, going to be very uh, happy to hear what you have to say about the subject that we're going to be talking about. Mm. Um, you know, uh, like Jay said, she is a Facebook blogger and she's a YouTube partner. Yes. And one thing I do want to mention is your twerking video. <laughs> yes. That kind of made, uh, kind of, you became quite famous with that. How many hits did you get on that on YouTube? I will never know how yeah, many millions, millions. Uh, on the internet. On YouTube it reached over four million when it went crazy on Facebook because mm -hmm. you know Facebook these days is even more viral than far times, you know, right, many many times right. more viral than YouTube. So I honestly don't know how many millions of views it got. But um, yeah, that's where I twerked for the world and showed them how to do it at least. <laughs> yeah, and I think it wasn't it the Steve Edwards uh, show on Channel 11 that... Uh, Channel that 11 yeah. showed it, um, you know, because what ended up happening was really, like I said, I, I like to do my styles called inspiration with a laugh. I coined that term, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but I like to use a lot of humor to speak about something serious. So I felt like, you know, in today's society, there's just a lack of self-respect in general. Mm -hmm. Very much. And uh, just with all the women going crazy, showing off their bodies, showing off their sexual moves, and seeking sexual attention constantly, I felt like I could say something about it in a funny way. And you um, did that. But drive my point home at the same time. And you did that. <laughs> so if anybody wants to see that, yes. they just need to go to YouTube. Yes. Uh, look up Jay Tracy and her twerking video. Jay Tracy had a twerk. Yes. Um, you know, honestly, I would do it differently if I could do it again. Um, I think that I really ended up preaching to the choir with that one because mm. I... Uh, turned off some of the people that I was actually trying to talk to by uh, using maybe, you know, some humor that was a little harsh for some people. But, you know, that's my style. I'm really you know, straightforward. That is your style. You need to I stick just, to it. I say I what I say yeah. and, you know, no yeah. apologies you, for it, You I guess. are you and, and yeah. I think you did get your point across. And um, it, it, the twerking video is not what you would think it would be. It's, so you do really need to, uh, to look it up and uh, you'll see what we mean. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you know, you're a Facebook blogger and you, you're very inspirational to me. Thank you. Um, like, I, uh, I get a lot of inspiration from the things that you post. And the other day, and seeing how we're going through uh, quite a, a change in, our, in America, yes. um, you posted something about um, racism and bigotry and an experience you had as a child and mm -hmm. I thought maybe you could uh, share that with us. Yes, well um, 
a lot of people don't know what nationality I am when they see me, you know, they, I, I've gotten all sorts of guesses. Um, and I always tell people, eh, it's nothing spicy. I know I look <laughs> Latina, but it's just plain old chocolate and vanilla. Um, so I do have, you know, I am mixed race. I have a black mother and a white dad who is of Hebrew descent. And growing up, I, you know, we got stared at a lot as a family, but it never mm -hmm. really sunk in on me that, you know, or what race was, you know, because, because I grew up in a mixed race home, skin color was literally just skin color, like hair color mm -hmm. or height mm -hmm. or weight or eye color. So it was just a physical trait, didn't really mean anything to me. But my parents did an amazing job of instilling in their children a lot of self-confidence, self-esteem, and you know, just knowledge of who you are being based in who you are, your character and your personality and your mind rather than what you look like you know, or your background. So I did experience racism as a child in certain instances, and the one that I posted about on Facebook most recently because of what's going on in today's world with Trump being elected and racism, I don't think that it's really so much is brand new, it's just all being exposed. Mm, exactly. You know, racism has been around since, who knows, mm -hmm. probably beginning of humans, humankind ever since it, you know, we all split off and segregated. Um, and it will always be around, I, I'm pretty sure, because yeah. humans aren't perfect I and agree. will always I be agree. human. There are always going to be fools in the world. So, you know, racism will always exist, but it's really being exposed right now. So I just wanted to post something to remind people that really the only thing you can do in life, because racism is not the only problem, it's not the biggest problem, Mm -hmm. It's not the worst problem. I mean, some people may disagree with that, but we have a lot of problems in this world. And the only thing that you can do is take personal responsibility for who you are and for the impact that you have on the people around you, in your world, in your community, in your family, in your home, and in your walk. So I just wanted to remind people that, you know what, it doesn't matter what other people call you, what other people say, whoever's staring at you, whoever's looking at you crazy, whatever's going on in the world, whoever the president is, because mm. that exactly. president is not the president of your life. No. The president of your country is no. not the president of your life. You are the president of your life. Right. And you decide who you are and what affects you and what doesn't. Right, right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my mama said it doesn't matter who the president is. She says, I still have to work for a living. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's you know, the truth. So. That's the truth. <laughs> and the president, whoever the president is, he ain't going to make you rich. He ain't going to make you poor. No. He ain't gonna make you happy, he ain't gonna make you unhappy. Right. He ain't gonna make right. you wise, he ain't gonna make you foolish. Those choices are up to you. Right. And how you're raising your children is really what matters. What you pass on to the next generation yes, is what's yes. gonna matter. And I'm a believer in the Lord, so I definitely believe that I, it really don't matter who the president I is. Totally, there is one I Lord totally over my agree life. I with you on that. I'm a believer <laughs> and in the Lord as back. well. I, I'm yes. a believer in the Lord as well, so. Um, I um, I just want to uh, to say you know everybody if you if you want to be inspired if you want to want to uh, be have some humor added to your life look Jay Tracy up you. on YouTube yes. um, she has so many so and many Facebook and Instagram and Instagram yeah and Twitter, well yeah yeah and yeah just Google. Um, <laughs> My website is jtracy.com. Yes. Yes, okay, so to okay. Find there you go. That's how you can look her up, yes, jtracy.com. I'm just so happy that you uh, were able to join me on, uh, on the show. Thank you for inviting and me. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, uh, I would love to have you back again. Absolutely. So we want to keep up with you and see what, you, see what you're going to be doing next in life. Mm, writing books. Oh, okay. Writing books. <laughs> That's coming. All right. Coming. All right. It's Writing coming. books. So definitely keep up. Yeah. Definitely keep up. Yeah. I think I'm going to do one too. That, <laughs> you should. That, that's the thing to do you nowadays is write a book. So thank you everybody for, uh, for joining, joining us today on the How To Show. And uh, my name is Marcia Duran. I'm the co-host on Donnie D's Words of Wisdom and my guest was Jay Tracy.